There can be no excuses. Celtic came down to racing's level and engaged in a running street brawl with their vicious opponents. First to be sent off is the most unlikely candidate, Bobby Lennox. It's clearly a case of mistaken identity, as the cameras catch John Clark squaring up to the racing defenders. Uh, there was an incident, uh, two or three incidents early in the game, and uh, the referee called the two captains together and said to Billy, the next incident, eight of the greens and six of the blues will be off the field. And a few minutes later, the boy had a kick at me, Jimmy, in the centre circle, and was a bit, bit of a fracas. Everybody got involved, and I was put off. I, actually, I went off the field, and the big jock put me back on, said it wasn't me to get back on the field. The referee put me off again, the big jock made me get back on again, and then the guy came over with a sword, and I just left the field. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next, it's Jimmy Johnston's turn. More sinned against than sinning as he attempts to shrug off yet another Argentinian assault. I think honestly, I mean, that was the fit, but that was just, you know, it was total humiliation, definitely. No complaints about ordering off number three. John Hughes's temper boils over in the searing heat of the Estadio Centenario. The crazy thing was that when I got up close to the goalkeeper, you know, there's 80,000 there, television cameras there, but what came into my head was, if I hit this guy, nobody will see me. You know, it sounds crazy. And when Big Jock after it in the, the restroom, he says, what were you thinking about? I was stupid enough to repeat it to him, you know, and you can imagine what he said to that. Bertie Old takes umbrage at another niggling foul and lashes out. He refuses to leave the field. The Paraguayan referee has lost control and he knows it. Armed police try to calm the situation, but Old stays where he is. I says, I don't understand what you're saying. Now that shows you how strong he was, because he had sent, already sent a couple of other players off, which was wrong. And, he, and, and, and here again, it wasn't the players that was causing it. I mean, I remember Murdy, God rest him, picking up one who was faking injury, and Bobby picking him up with the exact feet and dragging him to the sideline to get the game carrying on. But this shows you how weak the referee was. In the confusion, unseen by match officials, Tommy Gemmell takes his own revenge on one opponent. I think his name was Ayala, I'm not too sure, but I think it was Ayala. And he came right across the defence and spat in every one of our faces. Now, I mean, you don't mind somebody kicking you, but for someone to spit in your face, I mean, that's not allowed. And I said, well, I'm afraid I'm going to have you. So I hit him one of my to kick in the ghoulies and uh, what a scream he let out. <laughs> I put his family jewels up his back for a hump. <laughs> Somewhere in the mayhem that's the second half, racing score what proves to be the winner. The, the referee was shocking. Um, I, I know you should never say this, but that referee was bent. There's no doubt whatsoever about that in my mind. None, none whatsoever. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly how to favour the Argentinians, and, and he did that. But we lost the place, and once you lose the place, then you're not entitled to any respect. Celtic's world title dream has ended in a nightmare. Four Celts and two racing players have been sent off. The heroes of Lisbon are pilloried for their part in the Battle of Montevideo. The beautiful game has never looked uglier. They had no intentions of allowing us to play. As Jimmy, Jimmy would have torn them apart. Well, I've never seen Jock so low after the game. He was absolutely uh, bereft after the game, you know. And um, the following day when we left to come back to uh, Britain, he uh, was sitting at a table in the restaurant 
and eventually put his head on the table and cradled his head in his hands. And to see him like that was a, was really a shock to us all. It must have uh, been a really serious part of his life for him to, to react like that. You know? If this is World Championship football, it should be banned right now. I have never been so ashamed of this great game of ours as I am now. And I am sad Celtic also became soccer thugs, but not surprised. So, what happens now? What happens hurts the Celtic players more than any Argentinian boot or elbow. Chairman Bob Kelly is so ashamed he imposes unprecedented fines of £250 a man. At the time, the European champions are earning £30 a week. We were not very happy about it. I must confess, my own case, I asked to see the chairman. He wouldn't let me see the chairman. Uh, and he's, I, uh, he asked me what I was going to speak. I said, if the fine, you know? Because my argument is going to be, uh, Mr. Chairman, I sincerely hope that you have been fined and Mr. Steen has been fined, and Mr. Fallon has been fined, because the decision to play the third game was taken not by the players, you know? That was going to be my argument. Naive as it sounds. I think they said, we beat the Dindy Saturday before we went to, to Uruguay or whatever, uh, Argentina, and they said we'll take the bonus money off you. A bit of a shocker. I thought they might have found a week wages when we were sitting about the table that day. I knew that we had to get, that something had to, but he could have he ridiculed us in the dressing room and kept it in the dressing room, but to take the, f the money off is what he did, I thought that was a wee bit harsh. The directors, they had seen what was happening, they knew what was happening, they had seen the, 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 the conditions in which we had been forced to, to play the third game, and it, it, it was a game that should never have taken place. Racing are the most professionally dirty team I have ever seen sinisterly cold and calculating in the fouling and what angered me more than anything else was Celtic players exchanging shirts at the end with these prancing arrogant caballeros yes I am bitter this was not football this was war people will talk to me about the Argentinians and all that I just I thought the Argentinians before the Falklands and they just laugh at you and said, where was that? This is the battle of the river play and the battle of Montevideo. I can't look back and it's not a fond memory. I, I, I just disappointed. As I say, I think we could have beat them. If we played them again, we would have beaten them. It's, but that's easy to say, you know. I'd love to add the medal. And I think we were good enough to win it and give them the opportunity. But we were never given the opportunity to play. At the end of the day, if I look at the results, I see it was still only one nothing in our third game, but we were down, you know, technically to seven men. I know Bertie didn't leave it mark, but uh, technically we were down to seven men. And, you know, uh, we should have Manny Seventeen of Equilibrium. Under the modern rules, the way goals count double, we would have we'd have got home with that trophy. And probably that's that would have been better for us because the third game was just an absolute disaster. <laughs> <laughs>